Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, COVID-19 legal considerations that every business owner needs to know. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. Stories are what make my world turn. Before live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over 100 clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. So if you're a business owner, there are a lot of considerations that you weren't thinking of pre-pandemic. We're faced with a lot of stuff, mask, no mask, vaccine, no vaccine, social distancing in the workplace. It's kind of a conf confusing maze of options to talk about that today. John Wilding, he is a uh, corporate and securities partner with Barnes and Thornburg. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It's exciting times, you know, it's been a rough year. Nobody's going to contest that, but we're coming out of it. Every adult that wants a vaccine can get it. I got mine at Walmart about a week ago. So businesses are open. People are networking. We're going back. We know best. What kind of questions are you getting from your clients these days as they reopen? Well, my core skill set is a corporate lawyer, so I help people buy and sell companies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into the due diligence of buying a company. And one of the key things that people are focused on is how has COVID impacted these businesses? How do we value them? What is their customer base like? Are their customers going to be around? Um, do they have issues with their employees? You know, we now live in somewhat of a Zoom virtual world. Um, are they going to go back in the office? Um, can we require them to get a vaccine? Can we, we reward them if they do? You name it. You know, we also haven't been in courts for over a year. So depositions have been by Zoom. There's a big backlog. And so our clients, uh, we help them with problems and opportunities and yes. And, you know, so we get a lot of calls. Let's talk about depositions for a second, because uh, I guess if, if you're face to face with someone, you can kind of get get a sense about somebody uh, that you wouldn't necessarily get from Zoom. Is that the case? It is. It's different. I think people have gotten used to it. You know, we have some real pros at doing this and technology has certainly emerged. But yeah, if you're a litigator, you'd like to be in the room. Yeah. You'd like to be in the room with them. You'd like to have them on the on the, you know, to Absolutely. to ask questions and to have juries hear them with live testimony. And that's all coming back. I mean, I just can't stress how positive I am. I, I don't downplay the significance of any of this, um, but but I'm optimistic and we're coming back. Absolutely. And you're very active on the speaking circuit. Uh, we're going to put something up on the screen. Uh, you recently gave a, a talk on uh, emerging, emerging from COVID-19. You like to educate people, don't you? I do. I've been a lawyer for 20 years. I've been very actively involved in the middle market in Dallas. I chase relationships. I don't really chase clients. And so I have an opportunity to really be a trusted advisor. And so I'm one of the people that gets those calls. And occasionally we get to have presentations like that with my great partners, Victor Vidal and Doug Haloftis and, and to be here with you today. So I'm just really blessed. Well, another thing that I'm really impressed with is your um, skills as a networker, because uh, one of the reasons we invited you is you are the founders. Yes. That's amazing. I've been buying people drinks for 20 years. <laughs> All right, tell us. It's <laughs> I haven't bought a lunch at the Ritz-Carlton in at least 10 years. I love my friend Dean Faring. Yes. Okay, we're going to put a page up so people know more about it. It's called Ritz Last Tuesday. But tell us the very early days of this. It actually you, it started at Bo Nash, you were saying. It started at Bo Nash. So for the, uh, the old timers in Dallas, that would be a legendary name. But... Um, and Bo Nash is no longer there because they brought Nobu to Dallas and love Nobu. But uh, my event is called Ritz Last Tuesday. It's open to the public. Um, we do it outside. We follow all the COVID rules. But uh, like I said, it's really happy hour every month for 20 years, Jeff. The only time I didn't have it was for 
a good part of the last year during COVID because candidly, you couldn't get large groups of people together in public place. But we're open now, you know, bring your mask. Um, the event's tomorrow night at the Ritz-Carlton, so we'll be on the patio. And, um, you know, before COVID, I would have five to 800 people come every month. Uh, I think I've got 350, 400 people coming tomorrow. And so, you know, here's the, the bottom line on that. I've, I've been blessed to work with some of the best law firms in America. Um, you know, they're, they're very much uh, in the box. I'm sort of an out of the box person. I work with entrepreneurs and I have to get out and hustle and meet people and be a value add to them. And so when I first started, I had worked for two federal judges. I was working for a Dallas based law firm and I'd meet all these fabulous people and I get their card and I put it in a stack and it was kind of worthless. And I really wanted to get, um, I wanted to chase these relationships. So I knew one day that my technical skill sets would catch up to my networking and relationship building. And so I started the party and it started with three people and, you know, three months later, there was a hundred people and 400 people and then a thousand people. And, um, I've literally connected thousands and thousands of people over the last 20 years and I love it. And it's really become part of my identity. It's, um, I call it the anti-networking networking because I made three rules when I started the group. If you ever want to have a party that you enjoy, start it and invite people. And so the rules were no sponsors, no speeches, and no name tags. Mm. I'd seen law firms put on these events where they have a very much of a ROI. You know, I used to call it the traditional middle-aged white guy events. This is not that at all. This are exciting people, dynamic people, a very diverse group of people. There are as many women as there are men. It's every age. It's every uh, industry. And people come back because they like it. It's as simple as that. I actually, I think I, I happened into the Ritz uh, one evening when you guys were holding your event, and I was blown away. I thought it was some large national convention or something like that, and found out that no, it's something you guys do every month. What's the secret to keeping the group together after all this time? Because we've both seen networking groups, you know, start hot and then they die out. Well, I get so much out of it, but I don't want anything from it, and that's that's the truth. So. You know, the value I get is connecting a lot of people and they go off outside the happy hour and have lunches and dinners and work with each other and invest in deals together. And, you know, they kind of become their own uh, group of people that that enjoy coming and they get something out of it. And it's very efficient for them. And it's very efficient for me because I can get hundreds of people in a room. And I don't have time and they don't have time to go do drinks and all this. Every month, people know they can go to the Ritz-Carlton and see a lot of friends and be with a lot of friends. And they're going to be welcomed. And it's not going to be, Bush, I'm a lawyer, hire me. It's not that at all. But what I have are advocates. I have hundreds of people walk in the streets that once or twice a year and sometimes more. Um, they'll get a call and they say, I need a lawyer. So my technical skill set is helping people buy and sell companies. Um, but I have a legal department. Mm. So, you know, problems and opportunities, whatever they are, trusted advisor, you know, bring a lot of resources. I'm in a wonderful law firm. We have over 700 lawyers. So virtually anything that you would come across that's a problem or opportunity, we can help you with. Wow. And uh, and that's a big resources yes. that, you know, fortunately don't have to deal with lawyers every day. But when they need one, they know where to go. John, I would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about Why Texas. Uh, you and I are good friends with Ed Curtis. Uh, tell us more about Why Texas and, and why some of the people watching right now should get plugged in. Sure. So Why Texas is the letter Y in the word Texas. And, and they basically uh, serve as an entry point for companies that are relocating their business. Um, Ed Curtis is the founder and CEO. He came to me probably 15 to 18 years ago. And said, can you help me, you know, set up a legal business entity? And I did that and, and executed on those. And so any CEO from Elon Musk to Toyota, any company that comes through Texas yes. finds their way to why Texas. And what Ed does is he creates this networks of CEOs that have already done it. Because if you haven't heard, Texas is fabulous. And people want to come here and they want to bring their businesses here. And so it's really exciting to know, you know, Ed's been to, to my happy hour, Ritz last Tuesday, you know, 
many hundreds of times over the years. And, yes. and that's just an example. Ed lives in Austin now. And so we're great friends. Um, he, I've, I've had my party in D.C. quite a bit, in Palm Beach. Ed has come with me. He's been so great to refer clients. And, you know, everyone has a lawyer. So Ed knows that I can work with people and chase that relationship and build the trust and the business will come. Mm. And he's the same way, you know, yeah. he's really a servant leader, a giver and somebody that um, can really help you in whatever you're trying to, to do. Outstanding. Uh, John, you've been a great guest. We're going to have to have you back in soon. We're going to end with a couple of websites. First, your website, that's btlaw.com, uh, btlaw.com to get a hold of John. And then uh, Why Texas, uh, just like it sounds, whytexas.com. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. You Appreciate you. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time.